Hey y'all, this is Will I Am, Will I Is, Will I Was, something like that. So today we're going to talk about interactive web pages and web utility programs. Okay, so let's uh, mosey on and see what we have in store on this first slide here. All right, so we're talking about interaction, uh, interactive websites. And these kind of technologies, um, you know, we'll, we'll use to make these kind of websites. One is the cascading style sheets, also called style sheets, and JavaScript, Ajax, and we also have applets and mobile browsers. Okay, so we'll dive into each of these with more details, but right there we're just giving you all a list of what we're going to talk about. Okay, so cascading style sheets. You all might have heard of style sheets for the uh, HTML web pages. And these give formatting, okay? So you got the actual web page, and then you got another page that has the formatting part. And it's pretty cool. You can actually use one style sheet to format uh, numerous or one or several uh, web pages. And then it's pretty good. It's very flexible, okay? So very flexible, yeah? Um, with uh, the, the CSS style sheets. And um, so depending on if it's on a mobile device or say on a you know, laptop or maybe you have you know, like cell phone or something. So it, it can change the display and show more stuff or less stuff, um, uh, more graphics or less. And uh, so that's this, this formatting too that you know you might you, I don't know if y'all know the HTML web code, but this is something besides that that kind of adds to that. Okay, so next topic is the JavaScript, and JavaScript now it's it's an actual programming language. Um, so you know CSS does formatting, but this is actual language that you use to interact uh, again with the user over a web browser. And it's one of the more popular programming languages on the web. So really, if, if you're thinking, hey, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to be a web programmer, then, hey, you need to learn JavaScript. So uh, I highly recommend uh, learning that language. And that, that'll make your web pages a lot more interactive and can do all kind of cool things. So you can do things like uh, make decisions with if statements. Or you have loops, you can repeat with loops, you can repeat repeat with loops and um, just different kind of graphics and interactive abilities uh, get user input and process it and boom you know, stuff like that okay so that's another uh, interactive web technology let's see what else we have here okay so the next one is called Ajax and um, I think that was some uh, Greek warrior way back in the day during the Trojan War or something but don't quote me on that one. Any rate, <clears throat> now we call it asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Dude, these acronyms are out of control. We got an acronym with an acronym now. Any rate, yeah, so we're, we're combining these different web technologies, and um, you can update part of a web page without redisplaying the whole web page. So, you know, it's kind of behind the scenes, um, it just speeds up the display of web pages. And you know that that makes it more interactive. Let's see. We also have uh, what's called applets, and it's a small Java program. If you ever taken some programming languages, uh, Java is one of the more popular programs as well, or programming languages as well. And we can use these to display graphics. Finally, the mobile browsers. So uh, I don't know if you have a mobile browser, but you know, usually there's some kind of touch screen and you can make it get larger or smaller just by, you know, moving your fingers around and that kind of stuff. So, you know, even uh, well, my brother's he's got a young son and I think he was like maybe like two years old or something. And, you know, he would just grab my brother's uh, iPhone and like, you know, start playing with it. He could do a lightsaber and he actually sent an email to my brother's friends by mistake. So that's... They're very, uh, what's my point here? They're very uh, 
Uh, intuitive, yeah. So uh, even a like two-year-old can start figuring out how they work, man. So it's neat stuff. Okay, so that's all we have to say about the interactive websites. Let's see uh, how about our next topic that we have here. All right, so then we'll get into web utility programs. Huh, that didn't sound quite as exciting as the interactive websites, huh? So now these programs, uh, they're going to have additional capabilities when you're on the uh, internet or, you know, using a browser. So things like plugins, okay, and also filters. And then finally, we have file transfer utilities. Okay, sounds um, pretty technical stuff here, yeah. All right, so let's let's have a look at this plugin stuff. Okay, so with the plugins, so we're gonna add special features to a web browser. So special features, what you know? Sometimes we have a movie that's a special feature, right? What's that? What's that? Okay, so some example features would be, hey, just displaying a file. All right, so even playing a video. Or maybe you have a search engine that's kind of up in the you know top of your browser somewhere. <clears throat> so anyway, that's that's what a plugin is. So it just enables these extra features. And you probably already know some of these companies: uh, Adobe, the Flash Player, QuickTime Player. What else? The Java plugin, like Windows Media Player or Acrobat Reader. So it's just. Um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of behind the scenes, but it is extra, what, extra things, or extra things, um, extra uh, mini programs that, anyway, called plugins, and you add these plugins, so uh, then your, what, your browser has extra capabilities, okay? So there's like a basic things your browser does, and then, you know, these are extra things that, you know, you think I think of why they do it this way. Different companies, okay, produce different software, and then they have different kind of formats for their files that they make, and then they have different kind of uh, programs or players that display these on your on your uh, browser. All right, hope that makes sense. Okay, let's see what's next here. All right, what we got? So we'll talk about filters a little bit, and Let's see. So, you know, uh, World Wide Web, you can access just about anything you want. Just type it into the search uh, engine. And, um, you know, sometimes embarrassing things can come up, right? So I think I typed in watermelons one time and some embarrassing uh, images came up. So, at any rate, so you might have, you know, your kids or uh, maybe my students um, will have different kind of software that can filter what they can see and maybe even time limits. You know, sometimes I think I need a time limit when I get on the on the World Wide Web. Let's see though. We got here a Net Nanny, um, McAfee Family Protection, Pure Sight PC, Cyber Sitter, and then uh, Cyber Patrol. So this is just uh, I just did a Google search and found kind of the, uh, the top five um, what web filtering programs out there. So th there's a lot of different filters. Um, that you can look around and try to check out. But um, so again, that, that can help with uh, not displaying certain web pages or again, limiting the time. You know, sometimes I get on there and start uh, reading too much uh, different uh, manga on there. And then, anyway, so I guess I should have a time limit too. Man, I'll get my own filter. All right, anyway, so we'll, we'll do one more uh, slide here and then we'll. We'll call it a, a day for my, my part. And uh, last part, okay, file transfer utilities. Dang, sounds pretty technical. So we might want to move files around, um, download them, upload them, that kind of stuff to and from the internet to your computer. So a good way to do that is FTP, file transfer protocol. There's different programs that will just move files around. Uh, it's a good idea, though, to have a secure one. So you can log in with a password. It's encrypted. People can't see or get to your password or see what you're moving around the internet. Um, and then the most common one, I think this takes up like 
30% or something of the, the traffic on the internet, maybe more, is BitTorrent. So it's uh, file sharing for big, big files, large files. Um, so, and it's the most commonly used. And apparently most of the web traffic, or a good part of the web traffic, is, is from this uh, the BitTorrent and moving the files around. OK, so that's uh, all i got to say about that. And um, I guess we'll uh, mosey on to the next presenter. And y'all have a good one. All right. Aloha.